Okay, podcast starts now. Wow. Wow. Today we are in the studio in Hollywood, California. Um, the life updates are nonstop. Nonstop. I wish they would stop. I literally wish for one day there were no life updates. I would actually be so grateful for have to have one day where I don't have to text anyone that anything has happened. I swear to God, the way I am fielding phone calls left and right, you would not believe. <laughs> so first of all, I'm visiting LA. That's right, to do my famous stand-up show. <laughs> Sold out two nights, baby. <laughs> and... Um, I, the other day, in the same day, you were in the hospital getting surgery while my sister-in-law was giving birth. Two hospitals, two coasts, two patients, <laughs> two shows. You know, I, and I am, I'm feeling like, you know, the matri- Carmela Soprano, the matriarch at home. That's like, I hope my boys are, are okay. That's my, that's, Car- that's my Southern Car- Carmela <laughs> Soprano. And, um, and meanwhile, my mom, who's very invested in both things, like, how's Sam? How's the baby? How's Sam? How's the baby? Calling me the second I'm, you know, entering a, a work thing or whatever. Yeah. And um, then I'm visiting you at the hospital. I'm saying, I need to bring him two pastries. What if he's hungry? What if my boy is hungry? <laughs> and guess what? I was. And you were. Of course, I'm getting a FaceTime to meet the baby while I'm at the other hospital. <laughs> then I'm like in the lobby of the hospital, people around me, you know, having God knows what. And then I'm like in the best mood ever being like, she's so cute. And then everyone <laughs> around me is like <laughs> in the process of like dealing with some terrible illness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you've really held it all together. Thank you've you. been uh, my rock. You've been the rock to so many people this week. Um, uh, and yeah, I, I had a surgery and, uh, you know, I'm uh, to the point and I, uh, so many calls, so many texts, m- my family's like, what's wrong? Mm-hmm. How are you? And I'm like, I don't have time. Yeah. Well, there is a, I'm, there is a sort of Munchausen-esque <laughs> thing happening with you where no one knows exactly what the deal is. <laughs> well, that's because it's not like, uh, it's not like an easy, it's not a quick word. You can't sure. be like, oh, I had an appendectomy. Of course. You know, course, it's sort of, of it's, mine was sort of custom. Well, yes. Um, and you always go custom. I, I've never, if you're getting your surgeries off the rack, you need to grow up. It's 2024. Yeah, you're in, we're in Los Angeles. We're in Los Angeles. It's Oscars weekend. <laughs> like, if you're if you're out there, literally getting like your leg amputated, like grow up, grow up, <laughs> get a custom surgery. Yeah. Um. Just know that it's perfectly fine and was sort of kidney related. And yeah, I'm gonna say it. I have a catheter in currently. No! <laughs> so we were saying, you know, we'll bring our guest in in a second, and I am dying to. But the big debate this weekend was we are having, you know, one of our true idols role models like uh, she is mother you know everyone agrees everyone has voted and she is the president of the united states yes (laughs) and meanwhile you have a catheter and And there's no way around it there's no way around the debate is do we were like will kathy find it funny if we bring it up or will she immediately leave the room (laughs) (laughs) and to me to me it had to be brought up because it is so notable (laughs) it is and i didn't know it was going to happen yeah and i like uh, the fear that struck me when the doctor told me that and and I was like, the first thing I thought was like, so I'm going to be in a room with Kathy with Griffin, Kathy Griffin, trying to do a comedy podcast I while can't. I have a catheter in. Okay, we actually need to bring her in because I'm <laughs> shaking with anticipation. Oh my god! Please welcome. Please to the podcast. welcome, literally the president of the United States, Kathy Griffin. Oh my god, I love her. She is <laughs> a round of applause. All right, first of all, I'm so honored because I went on Twitter before it became X, which is now just a Nazi playground. Yeah. But prior to that, when it mattered, I asked my fans. I said, Gaga has her monsters. Mm. Nicki Minaj has the barbs. What do you guys want to be called? And the number one vote was they wanted to be called catheters. (laughs) Oh, my God. Wow. So I am honored. And my (laughs) catheters support you. I have had a catheter. Uh, I found it to be a great relief because when I didn't have it and could not void, which is the doctor word for pee, (laughs) it was so painful. I felt like somebody was standing on my bladder with a combat boot (laughs) laughing. So my question is, how does your dick feel? Um, um, uncomfortable. Okay. It feels uncomfortable, okay. but not in a, it's been getting better every day. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, I've had it since Thursday. Uh, How long do we have it? Till Monday. Okay. But it, I will say it feels, it, I, every time I move, I'm like, ow, eat. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the big part of the narrative is Sam's doctor is being very chill about all of this. Oh, and he's like, the Sam, chillest guy you've ever Sam met. Sam didn't even know he was going to have to do this. And the doctor was like, what's the big deal? Right. Like, he was really like, well, most people would even want this. Like, why yeah. are you being so weird about it? And yeah. you're like, well, I have to, I have work. Like, will I be able to go to work? She's like, yeah, why wouldn't you? <laughs> 
It's like, it's okay, a well, it's a normal question. <laughs> yeah. the, the doctor's acting like none of us don't have a catheter. Yeah, exactly. 100%. Yeah. Right. 100%. And then I also felt gaslit because I told my mom, and I was like, isn't it crazy that we're going to, you know, uh, have to record in Sam and Catherine, and she's like, "What's the big deal?" I'm like, "Why is yeah. everyone trying to gaslight us yeah. into thinking it's normal to At walk around with a catheter?" My mom was like, "That's horrible." <laughs> yeah, and I was like, "Okay, well, don't go that hard. Like, yeah. I do have to do it. There has to be. We have to split the baby. <laughs> yes. I wish I had one in, Ugh. but I'm also granting that it's horrible, and it also could be normalized for people. Yes. Well, it's normalized. Yeah. Yeah. Normalize gay living. guys having catheters. <laughs> Thank and, you. Yeah. It's about time. It's about time. Uh, Start I'm, the movement. Yes, I'm going out to dinner tonight, uh -huh. and I think it's. I cannot stop thinking about how funny it will be to like be having a martini. Yeah, and a catheter. In. You can. Are you <laughs> Talk drain? about high low. How often are you going to drain yourself? I think I'm going to go as often as maybe like every hour when the bag fills. When the bag wow. fills. Yeah. Um, I keep saying. Uh, I keep, for some reason I keep referring to having the catheter as diva mode unlocked. <laughs> Well, that's, that's fabulous. That is fabulous. You you turn that like, right set, right, turn that frown upside down with that expression. Uh, oh, I don't even need to pee. Nope. Diva Just mode drained. unlocked. Honestly, Diva mode unlocked would be a great album title for you. It I would think. be really good. Or a special title. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's really genius. I love it. Um, I have to confront you about something, which Please. is so I'm as everyone, every listener knows. I grew up in Greece. My family is Greek, and I happened to see on a social media platform that you went to Madonna with Nia Verdalos, who's, my who's number the, one. the queen of Greece? Literally the queen she of Greece. She is the Britney Spears of Greece. She cannot go three feet in Greece without being mobbed by fans. Literally, yeah. and that's not a joke. No. And I, last summer, was in Greece, and my a friend of mine from my big fat Greek wedding, my big fat Greek wedding. the yes. empire yes. franchise and by the way I was recently rewatching Curb she's in a, a season one episode of Curb oh I playing had no idea. like Larry's like doctor or something I can't mm -hmm. remember hmm. she's great she's incredible one of the biggest like uh, pains of my life was I was in Greece and my friend had me over for lunch or something and it turned out that the day previous the previous day she had had Nia Verdalos over and oh, I had wow. missed that lunch and went wow. to the other lunch <laughs> that with is a stranger that I never met <laughs> that is not appropriate when you could have been with yeah. the queen of Greece literally so yeah. so how was are you friends with her I'm friends with her okay. we've been friends for a long time I don't even remember how I met her you know a lot of these celebs I meet them at like the, I call it the charity circuit yes of course. you know I went to a thing last night for the gay and lesbian center and I ran into Gabrielle Union who I haven't seen in years or Gabby as I call her oh? or at least as she was called back in the day <laughs> and I don't know how I know Nia but I love that she has this one country where she can go and she's got to have security oh, yeah. and everybody wants a piece of her and then she goes and hangs out with Tom and Rita. Oh, yeah. Oh, Tom I know. Tom and Rita. Because you know the big honorary thing. Honorary king and queen of Greece. Well, 100%. Yeah. And not even honorary. Excuse you, Rita Wilson Sorry. is Greek. That's right. <laughs> oh. That's right. <laughs> but so the, there are two Greeks yeah. queens. When I was growing up, the big thing was Tom and Rita had a home in, I believe, in Tiberias, which is an island. And he would... There were stories that he would grill on the beach and like give everyone like a little subaki, oh, a little can sausage. You imagine <laughs> Fun. getting getting sausage from <laughs> yeah. Tom Hanks and Rita, of course, is you know dancing in the corner doing traditional Greek <laughs> yes. dance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do you feel like the Nia Verdalos of gay guys? Kind of. <laughs> yeah, you I really mean, are. I admit Nia, that Nia, Nia when, Galos. <laughs> when we went to Madonna, I don't know if you know the movie Soap Dish, but it's one of my favorites. Yeah, love. No, I and there's seen a it. great scene where Sally Field isn't getting recognized enough, and so Whoopi Goldberg takes her to a mall in Jersey, and I have to. Admit Met, walking into the Madonna concert with Sia, Paris Hilton, <laughs> Lunell, and Nia Vardalis. And I got a lot of shout outs, like a lot yeah. of Hey Kathy. And I was stopping. And they're, of course, very famous. So they're all going really fast, getting to the seats. I'm not going to speed up that moment. So I was slowing down, posing. I <laughs> let go of Paris at least three times and said, yeah. You're on your own, bitch. Uh -huh. It's my time now. But it was a fantastic night. We had a wild girls evening. And I, I did do a post about it on, on my TikTok or my Instagram. You can see it. Because as much as we all worship the Queen Madonna, I did not know she has a strict no air conditioning policy, oh. which Rosie O'Donnell said extends to her life and her homes. Wait, really? Yes, because she thinks it's unhealthy. And so we ended up leaving early because I'm 
an older gal. And we actually started getting overheated. And even though Paris Hilton was dressed up like S&M Madonna in some little outfit she got from Trashy, trashy Lingerie that day, mm-hmm. Lunell was in like these Fendi sweaters and Sia had on this big taffeta gown that had layers to it and we kept tripping on it and sitting on it. So we ended up having to leave early. And as a gay man, I feel very <laughs> guilty about that. And I, yeah. I would not be surprised if Madonna yelled at me, although I don't know her. But if I ever met her, mm-hmm. I'm ready for her to yell at me and say, who do you think you are leaving my show? I early? think it would be an honor for you to be. Yelled. Yeah, that I would, would be huge. thrilled. Yeah. I would yeah. be laughing and crying at the same time and davening. You know, she yelled at um, she yelled at Andy Cohen when I saw her well, in New York. Well, sh- somebody should. Well, I mean, you're telling me. <laughs> A lot me. of people are now. <laughs> yeah. That's, oh, that's, <laughs> oh right. that's true. Wait, what, yeah. why did she yell at him? Because she was like. Um, she sort of saw him stop saying bad shit about yeah because he yeah because he like talks about her on Watch What Happens Live and she like spotted him in the crowd and was like Andy you stupid fat yeah (laughs) yeah she didn't say that but but honestly she she should have it was implied it was implied well look I I gotta say I loved her show I think it's an amazing show you should go see it if you can it's really amazing and the fact that she's doing the same dance moves as the freaking videos in the MTV heyday and she's 65 is pure inspiration and so I've been reading a lot of ages comments on TikTok and Instagram, and I'm not having it. No. That is our queen. And does she sing? You know, probably not. But we don't really go to hear the actual singing. We don't wow, mind the ageism is coming from inside the house. That's right. It's from <laughs> the accusations the house. are coming from Kathy Well, Griffith. she's not Maria Collis. Yeah. I'm just saying. She never was. But she's our Madonna. Yeah. And the way she gives up the hits and she sings Bad Girl, which she hardly ever sings live, yes. and Live to Tell, and she gives up the hits, and it's a two and a half hour show. You know, not that I know because well, of course. Early. But they tell me no, but it's a great show, and I love that she's doing it at sixty-five because I don't think it's desperate. I think she's proving a point Completely. that while Cher still tours, which is also one of my faves, but Madonna just the dancing part is what kills me. And just so you know, the Janet Jackson tour is also amazing, and I Janet at good. sixty is doing the same moves from the videos, yeah. and also not singing, but not important to me. <laughs> Right. Not important to me. Who is singing? Sia. Okay. Sia, yeah. sing. Sia Miley. Sings. Miley. That's true. I love Miley. Yeah. Gaga sings. Gaga, Gaga sings. Right. Yes. I am over. I don't need everyone to I sing. I mean, here's the big I don't question. I need Britney to sing. No. At all. God, no. La- when I did go see her Vegas residency, I did go with a genuine heterosexual who I dragged. <laughs> Beautiful. Who I'm divorcing <laughs> because of this. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but he turned to me and he, about 20 minutes in, so sincerely, he goes, um, I don't think she's even really singing. I think she's <laughs> lip singing, sinking. I go, look around. You think these gays care? Yeah. These gays are doing cartwheels. Their phones are <laughs> out. True. They're jumping up and down and dancing. <laughs> Nobody gives a shit. She's doing the best she can. I think and that's she's why I'm, Brittany. Yeah. And that's why Miley is such a big deal when she comes out yes. because people are like, oh my God. People can sing if they want. Kelly like, Clarkson? Kelly Clarkson. Get out of town with yes. Kelly Clarkson. I know. She I can know. sing anything. I know. Um, you know what the big mystery is? What? Beyonce. Beyonce probably does. I would think she does like half and half because you can't uh, yes. dance that you much and sing. Right. I agree. That's what people have to understand. Yeah. She's really, really moving around doing real yes. choreography. So she's probably got the autotune mic, which is also fine with me. It's also That's fine, fine with me. Yeah. It's part of no, the whole I, show and it's a show. Yeah. It's not a recording session. No, no. We're not in the studio yeah. with Phil Spector trying not to get shot. <laughs> We're just trying to make the case happy and do a lot of fun dancing. <laughs> and thank Did God we to that tour, the Beyonce yes, tour. Yes, of course. See, that was my biggest regret because that seemed so cool and that album the really is good too you can see the movie oh you should see the movie oh. yeah okay i should see the movie because that really talk about one for the gays right like yeah that, that i album. mean it was like literally she yeah. just delivered it was only a, she was she practically banning straights i mean yeah practically yeah that's why close. they didn't give her the grammy right <laughs> Right. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the systemic, Academy. you know, issues. Go deep. Still issues there, honey. Still there. And by the way, can we just? I know we're being light, but can I just say cause, to the gays, you guys, <laughs> elections are not every four years. They're not every two years. They're every year. Please, your rights are being rolled back at a 
unbelievably high speed. Please, gays, get out there and vote. Vote blue no matter who. Vote down ballot, not just the presidential. And Joe is our guy. And I don't want to hear how old he is when, you know, Trump is only 18 months younger and Joe Biden has done right by the gays. And remember, we don't have the House of Representatives. We lost the House. So Joe can't pass every single bill you want. But Joe is our guy. I'm not fucking around. If Trump gets back in there, say goodbye to marriage. You will say gay, see gay bashing like you've never imagined. It's going to be worse than pre Stonewall. So there's my serious warning that I have to do as a humble, humble icon. Well, we are in the. Pro- we'll send you. Did you a- catch me calling myself an icon? I mean, <laughs> listen. Did you catch me disagreeing? No, yeah, I didn't blink <laughs> once. I said correct. Yeah, I was like, yeah. Like, yeah <laughs> <laughs> but we're gonna. We'll send you a T-shirt. We're in the process of printing merch that says. I listen to Straighter Lab and I vote. <laughs> yes. Yes, it's for Which everybody. Which I think is perfect having Griffin. Thank merch. you. Yes. I will wear it proudly on yes. my walks where I'm Incredible. You and Mia. by the Daily Mail yes, without yes. makeup anytime you oh, want. That would Incredible. be actually groundbreaking for us. Good. I, would, I will absolutely wear it. Should we do our first segment? I think we should do I'm our first so segment. I'm so eager to actually. get into our topic. In fact, I will wear that t-shirt yeah. until I'm paparazzi in it. I mean, I will listen, wear it out. I mean, it would be our greatest honor. Okay, you got to it. see Deal. you in the Daily Mail Deal. wearing our merch. Deal. Done. <laughs> and it's a it's a positive message. Vote. Positive message. Yeah. It's true. So, Kathy, our first segment is called Straight Shooters, okay. and in this segment, we give you a series of rapid fire questions. Right. We have to choose this thing or this other thing. Okay. It's not going to make any sense. I don't need it to. And the one rule is you can't ask any follow-up questions about how it works. You just Why would It's I? like a Rorschach test. I'm barely you... interested in this conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see if the second gets me. All right, me. Kathy, you ready? <laughs> being best dressed at the Grammys or being arrested in Miami? Arrested in Miami. Okay, Kathy, a Fellini film or a Panini Press? Panini Press. Okay, Kathy, being open to interpretation or being honest about the allegations. Honest about the allegations. <laughs> okay, Silver Lake or Golden Shower? Silver Lake. Speeding on the freeway or receding during a three-way? Receding during a three-way. <laughs> yeah. Um, government corruption or chocolate mint confection? Ooh. <gasps> government corruption. Yeah. Seizing the damn day or teasing that dumb gay? <laughs> <laughs> Mind blown. Oh, teasing that dumb gay. <laughs> you gotta. Okay. Popping a melatonin or shopping with Pharaoh, comma, Ronin. <laughs> melatonin. Yeah, you gotta. Wow. wow. You know, we rank our guest performance on a scale of zero to 1,000 doves yeah. um, in honor of the Lady Gaga song, 1,000 doves. Naturally. Dove. And I gotta say, it's gonna be a thousand. That's gonna oh be a thousand. It has this to be a thousand. Day. Yeah. And you know, I actually think we've been saying recently we've been a little too easy on our guests with the ratings. I think almost eleven hundred. Okay. I, I say we go first above. guest okay. to ever go. We're upping the doves. Upping yeah. the doves. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, Gaga. We're going into debt. We're going into Dove debt. debt. Doves just, debt. You, for you may need them at some point. I get yeah. it. I yeah. get it. One once we start selling some merch, we'll get some doves back. Once those t-shirts fly off the shelves. Exactly. Yeah. Um. Well, incredible. I mean, should we get into our topic? I think so. Can I plug the tour for one second? Oh, well, Please. we have to. And, and actually, after you do that, then I have something to show you. Please plug oh, the I tour. Oh, I love it. Okay, because, you know, I my cancellation was epic. Let's not act like any other celebrity got canceled the way I did. I mean, you Let's are... Let's cut the shit. The I was on the no-fly list, yeah. investigated by oh, the Department wow. of Justice. They were very seriously considering me, charging me with conspiracy to assassinate the President of the United States. I was interrogated by the DOJ under oath. It came directly from the Oval Office and the Attorney general's office never has happened in the history of comedy not even with the great george carlin who the local police bothered and so to for me to be on tour for the first time in six years is just so epic and meaningful so go to kathy griffin.com the name of the tour is kathy griffin my life on the ptsd list i got get it, it? This get genius. it? I mean, it's, it's a throwback but also a ptsd and we talk about it and please buy tickets and come with an open mind a true American hero. Oh, uh, yes. Not. I'm serious. I mean, the bravery. Well, I'm definitely what? in the history books. You are for in the front, you are in in the the front history lines. Books. Talk about braver than the Marines. I would I like mean, to see the Marines go through what you went through. It's not, if they could even if handle it. If they could it, even please, handle it. for one day. And I'd like to see shoes. a single Marine sell out, sell out as a theater. Like yeah, you yeah, love, Because on. I have not, I don't think they're, I don't think anyone's lining up to hear what they have to say about Beyonce. <laughs> I don't know, but I have a lot of thoughts. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I do have to show you something. Okay. Please let it be a receipt for a This is a photo from 
the year 2009. Yes, very good year for me. <laughs> very good year. <gasps> from the book signing of Kathy Griffin official book club selection. It's me. Um, I would say what it looks was like that? this was in San Francisco, like oh, right fantastic. by the water. It looks like I'm almost caressing your hair or something. Maybe you are. <laughs> maybe I am. Maybe you knew I yeah, needed a little so gentle head pat. It's me and Kathy. She's holding up her book, official book, book club selection in San Francisco in 2009. Which I thought by giving it that title, I could trick Oprah yeah. into putting it in her book club, but she didn't go for it. Well, you know what I'm hearing is now it doesn't even matter. Like now it's all about. The other Reese's Book Club, yeah, Jenna Bush Hager, and then they get turned into movies, and then they get turned into mm, movies. Yeah, that's the ticket. Right. So that's your next book should be something that you th that can be turned into just a film. Dear Reese. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's exactly. the title of the book. Dear Reese, get the hint. Get the Griffin. Yeah, yeah. Bestseller. All right. <laughs> wait, well, what about the Oprah Ozempic special? Okay, so I cannot wait. Do you think? I, I mean, wait, I don't know about this. Okay, so she had to get off the board of directors of Weight Watchers because she admitted she's lost all the weight because of Ozempic. Olympic, not because oh. of Weight Watchers, but in Oprah fashion, she's going to do a whole special about it. And I'm wondering if she's going to get other celebs to admit they're on it, because I feel like if you're a celeb who's on it, not that I'm saying they are Christina Aguilera, let's <laughs> just say it could possibly be Christina Aguilera. <laughs> that not be, that I know, allegedly. Allegedly. I am alleging, yeah. and this is my opinion, yeah. as covered under the umbrella of the First Amendment under of satire. Course. They can't put you on the no-fly list for that. Not for that. Well, Christina's powerful. <laughs> but I wonder if she's going to get anybody else to be like, and now Kelly clocks on! I mean, allegedly, talk about something we can't talk about. Allegedly. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not saying Kelly's on Ozempic, although we've already discussed that she has both of those women have killer voices and don't lip sync. But I'm just telling you, whenever that Oprah Ozempic special is, I am there. I'm a, I have a screening room. Mm -hmm. You're invited. <laughs> We're it's there. gonna be no it's space allowed. Yeah. <laughs> just us and homosexuals. We might let a couple of the lesbians in if they care. That'd, which yeah, I yeah. frankly it's hard to tell. I don't know lesbians if lesbians care about Ozempic. Do lesbians care that Oprah is on Ozempic? Please write it. We yeah, have a lot of lesbians. That would be really helpful. Yeah, I would know. love to know. Yeah. Let us know. Yeah. Although Rosie O'Donnell, who is a famous lesbian, is on Manjaro because she's diabetic and had a coronary arrest. So it's a miracle drug for her. So I'm actually pro Ozempic and Manjaro. Yeah. I think they get a bad rap. So I'll, there's a controversial take. Well, from what, what from what I understand, as long as there's enough for everyone, because yeah. the big deal is like, what if actual diabetics exactly, need actual it? Diabetes. Yeah. The yeah. But as long as there's Allegedly. enough for ever, <laughs> as long as there's enough for everyone, it doesn't seem like there are crazy side effects or that it's. I don't know. It, it is. Confusing conversation to wade into because yeah. sometimes I'm like, wait, what am I saying about like if I'm like do whatever? I'm what, sort of yeah, like, what is the correct? I thought opinion? you guys were medical opinion? doctors. That's why I'm here. <laughs> right? I thought yeah. this was like that TV show, The Doctors. Well, with gay guys. no, this is the catheters. <laughs> oh, the catheters, yeah. fantastic. Yeah. Then I know how to talk to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, All right, what's the segment? Sorry. Okay. No, 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 no. We're, we're just so now this is the normal, you know, the normal episode. So, so we want to ask you what straight topic did you bring with you today? What's straight about it? And then we'll sort of get into it. And and, and have our little takes too. All right. So this one is a little, I don't want to say dark. Yeah. But so as a, I'm 63, I've been, you know, working for decades doing specials and TV shows and all this other stuff. So I'm not going to lie. I've saved up a nice chunk of cha uh, cash. I'm also good with money, which is my other talent. I only have two. I'm funny and I'm good with money. And so... I, by the way, save your money. There's my advice. Save it, sock it away, because take it from me, you want it for a rainy day, because my rainy day was six freaking years long. But my topic is, I think I have yet to be with a straight, well, straight guy. I was, what if I just started to bear? I've yet to be with a straight guy. Good night, everybody. <laughs> no, but I think I've yet to be with a guy that isn't eventually feeling either emasculated or somehow diminished because I'm a well-known person and because I'm technically the breadwinner because yeah. rich guys tend to not ask me out. They usually want like the young bimbos. So does that happen in the gay world? Mm. And because of the gender politics, when you have two men or two women or two trans folks, is that out the window? I think, this, uh, go ahead. No, this is a juicy thing. Th this reminds me of like a conversation about height almost. Yeah. 
like in straight world height is like the most is so important tall girls like want taller guys guys feel like if they're not yeah, tall they have no right. value straight girls are obsessed with height they're yeah. obsessed See, with I'm it. short so I've never had to come up but my friend like I'm 5'3 but my girlfriends that are like 5'7 they it's a big deal plus they want to wear heels yeah so those yeah. gals need a guy that's like 5 11 and, and i've heard a lot of like tall girls be like it's annoying because tall guys still want tiny girls oh. and you're like and it's like if i'm a girl if i'm a 5 9 woman i want a taller man mm -hmm. but then he's dating the 5 2 woman right yeah right and i i think this is something that i don't think happens as much in the gay mm -hmm. world is like this like monetary uh the monetary imbalance meaning something more about you well it's complicated because it's almost simpler in the straight world because there are these established norms and you right. either follow them or you subvert them and either way you're like making a conscious decision and because there are no norms in the gay world it's almost like so much goes unsaid that resentments can really build up right about you know who's what I mean? the yeah. who's paying exactly. the bills yeah. who exactly. isn't yeah. yeah so I don't like I do know I'm not doxing them but I do know a gay couple where like that really became a thing and then one of them had like kind of a break and was and was just like woke up one day and was like wait I, I haven't paid for anything in 10 years and like I don't have my independence and blah yeah. blah I've sort of without realizing given up my career like mm -hmm. and I do think what happened to that couple they broke up and the other one moved um, back in with his parents oh <laughs> Yeah. Well, well, you know, we got to start somewhere. You should get a job. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, I do think you're start. right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, have you ever felt this? Like, I, there was like, especially like starting out. I, yeah. Misha was like my long-term boyfriend yeah. was like making more money mm -hmm. than me, mm -hmm. and in a way that I was very self-conscious of. And I would be sort of like, like really like, well, I'm gonna like. Like I would work odd jobs to like pay rent and stuff, but like he would be like, "Well, I want to go to a nice dinner," and I'd be like, "Well, I can't right. split right, that." Right. You know what I will say, and I'm sort of like working through this in real time. So I, Matthew, and I were sort of uh, comparable for a while when the strike happened. So I had like lost the job and then the strike happened. Mm. So I had like a bad 2023. Yeah, and during that time, it very much so I was making less money than him, like flat out. And that is the year that I proposed to him. And I'm like, <laughs> did I subconsciously, was I like, I need to reclaim back some power by right. being the one to propose, right, right. by becoming the <laughs> man, it. literally, yeah. like by initiating. And I, I do think that might be part of, part of it or, or something. Do you feel like in the gay community, it's something that's discussed a lot? Because with straight women, yeah. I've never been this girl, obviously, but I know girls that have like a list and it's like, he's got to have this kind of car right. and he's got to make this much money and he's got to provide. And I just never thought that way. No. And I blame yeah. my parents. It's their fault. <laughs> to answer your question, I do think many gay guys do think that way. Yeah. And I, it's a type. Don't you think? No, it's like a, it's like a, yeah, it's a very like specific the, type. Like the Twinkie yeah. Otter. You yeah. said it. Not okay, okay, got so it. There's like, uh, this the is a take type. Take care of me, Daddy Zaddy. Of course. Yeah. Uh, okay. yeah. There's yeah. this type. I even think like, and this but is. But does Daddy Zaddy then resent the Twink or is the Twink then resent Daddy Zaddy? I think, Zaddy? I think it it's a they mutually like, beneficial yeah. situation. And you know what? Sam and I talk about this sometimes, like being gay guys in our 30s, we're in this no man zone where we can't be young twink yeah. please help me daddy and we also can't be daddy yet yeah and we are invisible and like we'll be like in a <laughs> in like a party and it's all gay guys and it's like clearly the older rich guys are looking for a hot young yeah. guy and then we're sort of like so what are you doing later <laughs> you guys need a new name like for, the, need, for just people in the middle yeah, yeah. you need to yeah. invent your own category it's like true. there's the bears there's the yeah you know. so they've tried to make not like, the middles that's not the middles sexy enough. Yeah. the mids, uh, the mids. They, <laughs> they've tried to make like twunk happen but twunk is like if Wait, you're like is built. twink and what Tw and it's hunk. like a, yeah. oh i thought it was drunk a drunk <laughs> twink <laughs> Not that I have seen any of those. No, no, that's just no. a twink. That's just a twink. That's just a twink. No, I yeah. just would never be I, inappropriate. Twunk is. Am I wrong that twunk is like more built? Twink? It's supposed to be like a thicker twink. Oh, a thicker twink. Okay, and then it, of course otter, as you know, is a hairy twink. But I do think like a twunk is sort of like like when you're slightly older. Yeah, when yeah. you're like a twink in your twenties, you sort of grow into a twunk. Yeah. 
Interesting. I mean, it's almost like if you're in your 30s, you sort of are like, well, now I'm taking a break from being gay and I'm basically straight because I'm invisible. <laughs> and then I when I turn like how middle age is in the 30s in the gay exactly. community. Yeah. So yeah, that's totally. why we can't be the mids. Never mind. I take <laughs> exactly. back the mids. Exactly. You're too young to be mid. Mids should be 50s. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. So in your relationships, has the money thing always yes, been an issue? I mean, this is, I don't know if the guys would say that, but look, I mean, I went on the then Larry King show and talked to then, you know, Barbara Walters, my first husband, you know, stole from me oh. and bezeled. And that was brutal because my trust issues went out the door. But also, I couldn't figure out why because I really did like provide everything. Like he didn't need to do that. But it's something that every other female comic that I know who's in my generation deals with. Maybe the young girl, younger girls don't. I don't, the other thing I should confess, I don't know that many comics. I know the girls in my little clique, which is like Wanda Sykes, Chelsea Handler, Whitney Cummings, Sarah Silverman, um, Margaret Cho, but I don't know like a lot of the young up and coming girls. So maybe it's a generational thing. I'm trying to think of like the, the women we know in comedy and whether they struggle with this. I feel like a lot of the dynamics I'm familiar with yeah. are like the woman, what, especially when it's like two comedians. I know a lot of like the woman comedian being successful and the yes. males. And now I feel like I'm being mean to like a million of my friends. I know we can't. Like, no, yeah, but yeah. I'm actually, I'm not going to say <laughs> No, names, that actually is but true. I'm thinking in, with, yeah. of that too. Yeah, yeah I'm at, it's funny. I actually, I can think of two instances of people we know where the man is more successful and this is both both of them are comedians mm -hmm. and all the rest of the woman is more successful but then but kathy but you were in dating comedian you were in dating like, no i am not attracted to comics at all yeah. i am attracted to regular guys but i have been you know a woman of means now for 30 years mm -hmm. and so i had just ha i have no longer have an expectation yeah. to meet a guy who has money or power but like i said those guys don't come up to me usually it's younger guys but i have fucked every bar back in hollywood <laughs> and los angeles and the greater los angeles area and the inland empire and orange county and san francisco county. anyway you get the idea not so much concord agro country sure, but you know sure, sure, yeah, sure. i skipped a beat so i just maybe it's me because i just don't have an expectation of meeting like a rich guy but yeah I I, look, I have a house that's paid for outright. I kind of almost can't imagine another guy having a house and him being like, okay, whose yeah. house are we going to live in? So uh -huh. there might be a part of me that's going into it with that. Now, what about with the gays with the houses? Because, you know, you got gays with a Palm Springs house I know. and a WeHo house. So <laughs> this is a confusing thing. Yeah. Whose house are we living in? Whose house are we flipping for more money? <laughs> oh, God. Or do God. The, have the lesbians taken that over? Well, no, no. I, well, <laughs> Who's the really lesbians are doing it Don't lie to the, me. The, the lesbians are doing it ethically, except for Helen. <laughs> and then, well, <laughs> and then, don't get me started. And I think the gays like do not care about. Like the lesbians are like they're also reading a book about gentrification as they're flipping houses. Right. Yeah, you yeah, know yeah, what yeah. I mean, they're trying to do it tastefully. Yeah. They're trying yeah. to do it tastefully, and then the gay guys are literally like with a gun. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, they're like, people, could we turn this into a vacation could we spot? Turn yep. this into a vacation yeah. spot. Yeah. Did you see um, that there is this group of gay businessmen that are trying to do a new fire island? So they found West Coast. <laughs> no, in... like Europe. Like they oh. are saying they, they don't, found like an island. They're not saying where it is. Did but... you guys? Is there a gay island? <laughs> Well, so not yet, but if you give money to these venture you can, capitalists, you can maybe invest. there will be. So it's yeah, that is not a bad investment at all. And <laughs> well, I am not a risky investor, but let me tell you, if I just put the word out to just my friends alone, sure. by the way, we're building a gay island, which will turn into a country. Like, yeah. who are we kidding? We're yeah. going to no, get... it's true. It's either yeah, going to be a principality... And they're going to win least. Eurovision every year. Let me tell you yeah, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And so if that's a happening thing, that's actually a genius idea. I well, it's it sort of like, you know, every other, you know, Mykonos, Fire Island, it, it happens sort of organically, like right. gay. And usually how it happened is like it was a very undesirable, you know, location. And then you people came and in. Then, exactly. And like, you flipped an entire island. Literally. Yeah. So it is a fascinating experiment to be like, we're doing this with intention. We're do we're literally going in with like venture money. Yeah. And yeah. flipping an yeah. island. <laughs> do we know where in Europe it's going to be? I think, so I think there's something scammy about this. Like, I Andorra? think maybe, <laughs> I think maybe they like, 
are looking for an island. The Republic of Chad? Yeah, I think they haven't <laughs> like, decided I mean, yet. They haven't found it yet. Yeah. But politically, it if seems If anyone's going to find a desirable island, yeah. it's the goddamn guys. I mean, it's true. You people really. will find one that somehow doesn't have climate change. Yeah. <laughs> somehow totally. there's a mid-century furniture shop already on the island that the indigenous people ran. <laughs> it's going to be fabulous in any way. But It'll it's really kind of a genius idea. I mean, it would be I hard know. to get there. I know and, that and immediately. And Trump is reelected. We're all going. That's true. You're That's taking true. me in. I'm in somebody's yeah, we're basement. We're having little rainbow passports refugee. and everyone, yes. and we'll see you at the Trixie Mattel show. <laughs> yep, I'll be there. I do think, like, maybe generationally, mm -hmm. the housing thing is like we're just sort of like, or at least I'm sort of like, well, I'm never going to have a house. It is. There is something about like, uh, yeah, our even if, you, even if you have two guys renting places, right, right, right. how do you decide who's going to give up their place and who's going to yeah. live? Oh, oh, that's no, a good. That's, that's a, a good, good point. point. I mean, essentially, you just go to the bigger place, in right. my experience. <laughs> right? So, yeah, so you go well, yeah. to the nicer one, probably, or the bigger yeah. one, or the one with more room. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it is funny. Like, I moved into my uh, boyfriend's place when we moved in together, and there was about one week where I was I felt insecure about that, yeah. and then I was like, eh, I don't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're good at that, actually. Do you well, help with the rent? Yes, yes. No, we split okay. everything. Well, and, that's yeah. very gay. In the straight world, it, it kind of... Right, that would be like gauche. It's weird. Like, I don't know, like, I... I never like asked my husband for rent money because it just mm, yeah. felt like yeah. I'm just the one with the house and and also if it, it was, was reversed it would not be a big not deal. at all and that's why I'm asking is I just can't believe in 2024 we're still going through this and I yeah. just didn't know where the gays were on the gender politics when it's the same gender <laughs> totally well I do think it's just like because there are again no established rules it's both so liberating yeah and also so scary because you don't know what rule book to follow right yeah i mean it's it's a very confusing thing I, what's I, the government going to look like on gay island <laughs> that's a great question like is Do it you a think parliament so, uh, is right. it, i think is dictatorship, it a, dictatorship yeah dictatorship okay. yeah okay. and also are they electing because the thing with gay guys is they don't actually want to elect a gay guy okay they want to elect like a tall woman <laughs> right yeah Right. Yeah, I think there's something to it's that. It's sort of like with comedy, actually, I feel this way, where like gay guys would prefer, you know, a really funny woman comedian yeah. to like a gay guy being on stage. Because they're like, why isn't that me on stage? Yeah. I'm I'm a gay guy. Yeah. I'm funny. Yeah. I'm funny all the time. Right. I just said but something so funny earlier. when you look so at a woman, earlier. it's like, oh, I can just sit back and look at exactly. her. Exactly. Yeah. 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 No, I, look, I would not be, I would not have that house if it weren't for my gay audience. Literally. And the places I'm sold out on my tour are not just blue cities yeah. but you know i'm sold out in long beach because you people have taken over that yes oh area. i didn't know this yet mm -hmm. oh yeah you oh yeah you now own long it's beach. like congratulations. the rich it's the rich oh games. congratulations yeah. it's an honor yeah. and it's near laguna which you people have stamped <laughs> with your rubber stamp <laughs> and the other one that's almost sold out is palm desert shock oh Shocker. Uh, sure sure like at old mccallum and palm desert and honey that's when you get the homeowning gays yeah you get the little older gays there and they have maybe three houses like maybe two in palm springs and then one in weho you know we that's went that to game. um that's a juicy game townhouse yep. no you didn't you didn't come. i didn't go do you know about townhouse no what's so that? townhouse is this bar in essentially like the Upper East Side kind of mm -hmm. um, and it is you know in a townhouse that's why it's called townhouse and it is traditionally where older gay men intermingle with younger oh, twinkie okay. gays and historically also where a lot of like gay sex work would happen okay and it's one of these places that's sort of frozen in time because, you know, now everything is online and now everyone meets yeah. online. But then you go there and you really do feel like, oh, we're back in the heyday. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a documentary about it. Yeah. That's what's reminding yeah. me. Yeah. But I think those gays, like those homeowning gays are the ones coming to your show. Yeah. Is the one that is the ones that go to town. And they've seen gays. me before. Yeah. And I look out in the audience sometimes and I see a guy my age and I think, oh, my God, this guy may have seen me for the first time 30 years ago. Yeah. I absolutely <laughs> love that. I love that I get repeat business. That is good. Because I change my act all the time every show is different every city i start with the local material although i have a show in huntington new york on long island and there's a nazi march across from my oh, show God. and they used my tour poster oh no nazis are protesting the kathy griffin comedy show that's terrifying nazis 
Oh, God. I mean, I'm used to the Fred Phelps people. Of course. The Kansas, whenever yeah. I go there, it's the God hates F-A-G-S yes. signs. Yeah, yeah. Although the Fred Phelps people are, they're all inbred and they're teeth optional. Well, that is sort yeah. of like, a, it's you, kind of it is honestly punching down to even. Yeah. No, in fact, yeah. the gays just end up posing with them. Yes. Which yeah. is really an insult to me, but I understand it's part of the experience. Well, I have a, jo- I mean, I'm not going to get into it, but I have a joke right now that in the punchline is God is a woman and she hates fags. And I think that's a really fun <laughs> sign that you could have as a counter protester, yes, maybe yes. with your face. <laughs> yeah, it's still feminist. It's yeah, still feminist. It's very yeah, empowering. Yeah, empowering. Very empowering. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I know. So marches. Um, and the other, the other the other thing is, gays keep marching. We kind of stopped marching with COVID. Let's get yes, back to marching. That's true. We gotta, that's we true. March. Who knows? We had a close election. I'm getting. I'm very nervous for you people. <laughs> Kiss those rights goodbye. <laughs> I mean, should we all move to purple states and vote there? Yes. Okay. See you there. Lance, I mean, you're doing Lance the work. And which one should we turn into? A, Florida. Lance Bass is what? He's registered to vote in Florida. Okay. Whoa. See, that's a smart. Well, I mean, Lance Bass is literally doing more for democracy than we are. Absolutely. We need to step it up. <laughs> and by the way, can we just talk about how he looks by far the best out of the NSYNC reunion? He does. Yeah, look he great. actually did well for himself. But I mean, Justin, I, first of all, I think the straights are kind of turning on Justin. Oh, do yeah. They, everyone do is the gays care about Justin anymore? I mean, here's the thing. Justin is just, I hate to say it, but he's sort of like embarrassing now. Like, right. It's just like he he. He's didn't. doing the same dance moves from the 90s. Yeah, exactly. exactly. He, he yeah. didn't bring sexy back. He did not bring sexy back. He tried. Back. But also, I can't forgive him for Janet and Britney. No, no. It's, it's, I'm mad at him for two divas. He's um a horrible person. But there is this thing that I think is a gay guy thing where right. you like see someone flopping and then you want to protect them. Underdog. Well, he, there suddenly, is, he's there starting to become an underdog. The yes. nostalgia factor is very strong. With nostalgia it. factor. But also, it's like when everyone is, oh, he sucks, he sucks, he sucks. You're sort of like, well, I'm sort of like, well, he doesn't suck that much. Right. Yeah. There's something where I want to be like. We've already had Brittany say his dick is small. Yeah, you know what like, I mean. Yeah. He's he's. I think. I mean, he definitely deserves to suffer a little. Yes. Yeah, of course. But then it's like. But I, I get. I push back when people are like, "Well, and why do people ever like his music?" And I'm like, "Hold on, right? Like that was no, like, that a was really a real good moment. Singer. A good singer, a good dancer. Really but good the thing, singer. but he was sort of." You know, he was just the chosen one and he was given yeah. everything. Like, why yeah. does he get to work with Timbaland and Nelly Furtado? Right. And why does he get to, like, be the number one and the number one sex symbol and all this stuff? And it's he also like, did a lot of, as they now say, cultural appropriation. Yes. Yeah. Like, embarrassing amount. I think that is Brittany also... Which also called well, out in yeah. the book in a hilarious oh my, way. I, I saw that. Because I hosted the Billboard Awards one year in, like, 1999. And it was the height of Insane and Britney. And the way those kids would talk like they were black. Oh, yeah, you have a bit about this in in, in one of your specials. Yes. So uncomfortable because, first of all, what you do as a white person is, I'm sorry, I just look around to see if there's a genuinely black person because I want to make sure they're okay while white people are like, yo, what's up, what's up? And that's why I love when Britney did that thing about him seeing genuine and be like, full shizzle, genuine, full shizzle with the tizzle. That is so funny. So funny because it's true. Yeah. You know she... I'm not saying she wrote that book, but I'm saying that part's true. Yeah. yeah. Oh, absolutely. A hundred percent. I'm like, you was telling that story, even I'm like, I like, it's insane that you were just like around them. Like it's- around them. But I mean, <laughs> I look back and I see either pictures of myself with certain people and I can't believe I was there. You guys, I've turned into Forrest Gump. I've never <laughs> been Kathy, around that so is long. Literally tr- like I've you- like met everybody and somehow I've been in weird situations with like almost everybody at I this point. I think you've done so many things that are genuinely iconic that people forget like the fact that you were in the Slim Shady video is not even the top I'm twenty. The nurse thi- in the it's Slim not Shady even the oh It's God. not even the top twenty things. Yes, we've done. are we gonna it- have a problem here? <laughs> attention, attention! Are we gonna have a problem here? Yeah, I'm in the Slim Shady video. <laughs> I'm and in shock. you know how I got the job? How? Because I went up to Dr. Dre, who was the director, and I said I didn't know him, and I said, "Look, I'm." Just curious. How in the world did you think of me for this part? And he said with no hesitation, he goes, Snoop said you're really funny. I mean, that's... Come on! That's huge. Snoop got me a gig! That is so crazy. I Kathy, know! Would you ever run for office? I would never because I have too many skeletons in my closet because of my political beliefs. But aren't I'm they so out far of the, the left. Oh, they, out of they're the all closet? out. Yeah. They're all out. But I'm just saying... When you have Nazis protesting yeah, yeah, your yeah. comedy show, maybe you shouldn't be running for office. Uh, but or true. maybe that's exactly who should be running. Or for. Congresswoman Kathy Griffin. Congresswoman. Or Kathy can Griffin. I can I just go to president? I don't mean to be rude. I, no, I, I don't 100%. mean to be rude, but I don't have time. I have half a lung on my left side. I have lung cancer. I need to go right to president. No, you need to go. Right. Yeah, you I'm need to go right to president. I'm not being considerate. It's a medical no, of course issue. Not. Yeah. It's a medical. You have a doctor's to be note to be president. I certainly yeah. do. <laughs> Although you're not, you're you know you are. 
all in for Biden. You're not going to primary him. So no, maybe the solution is he, we elect I'm Biden. I'm in the wings. You're in, like, and if he even sniffles Ambassador to the UN. A, that's right. You ambassador, ambassador to the UN. Maybe you could be yeah. sort of a Dick Cheney figure. Like to oh, like I'm the woman behind the scenes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Really making, I, I'm in the situation room. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Calling the shots. Or sort of like he's making a speech and you're behind him. And when he says something kind of crazy, you're like, Right. <laughs> I do like a funny look yeah. or a good one liner. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that'd be really nice. I just actually. hold up a picture slowly of me and Lady Gaga. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, we love Democrats, and then I just slowly put it down. Oh, my God. <laughs> it's possible. That would actually be really, really helpful, I think. Do you right. feel like. Okay, maybe I'm wrong about this, but I it used to be that in every election, celebrities would really come out and be like campaigning. Yes. Like, is that not happening as much no, anymore? Because we get canceled for opening our mouths about anything and everything. There is more scrutiny. It is so bad. But let me just say this, and I do make jokes about her in my act in a tender and loving way. Taylor Swift. Mm. Don't come at me, Swifties. Oh, my Do God. Not, I know. I'm terrified. No, I'm no. terrified right now. We are now. on record. We have a new movement, which is being neutral about Taylor Swift. And it is the most controversial opinion you uh, can have. It's the I'm not sorry. I can't be seen with you. <laughs> Did you say neutral? We're it's trying our best. She's a queen. She's a queen. Because <laughs> everyone's either like, she's a queen or she should die. And we're like, no, we're we are neutral. To, we're okay, trying to remain Sweden, neutral. I'm Taylor Swift. Yes. But what? I, I actually do like her as a change agent. Mm -hmm. And I like that she's the First, think about this. She is the first woman in pop or rock music. Uh, think of all the divas. Cher didn't get this. Madonna didn't get this. Stevie Nicks didn't get this. To have her man, who's literally the football star, yeah. at her shows, pumping his fist with his dad and cheering her on. Remember with Cher, all of her boyfriends, oh, you're Mr. Cher. Totally. Like, Stevie Nicks never had, like, the dude she was dating also be famous. Like, so I love her as a change agent. And I honestly think if she stumps for Biden, if she even did one high profile event, I think she could tip the election. Oh, I agree. I completely. mean, literally. We talk about this all and the time. And that's okay to say because it's yeah. true. There's only, you know, there's no mainstream monoculture anymore. It's, there are very few things that are like at the level of, you know, Justin and Janet at the Super Bowl, yeah. you know, like, and I'm sure, do you find this when you're touring where you'll say something and people, and you think it's something everyone will recognize yes. and then they don't yes. because everyone watches different things on their phones and there's right. not like, you know, primetime TV, like just like. Even the housewives. Exactly. Yeah. There exactly. Used to, you know, you could make house, there were, let's say there were only two franchises at the time. Everybody knew Teresa Guidice mm -hmm. flipping the table. Yes. Everybody knew Carolyn Manzo going, all I care about this family. <laughs> and now you're trying to keep up with the chick who's in prison yeah. in Salt Lake City and Potomac. I never had the time to get into. Yeah. But yeah, as a comic, I find that what I do is I'll set stuff up. So like if I want to talk about Love is Blind, then I'll kind of tee it up and be like, well, they meet in these pods and try to make that part funny because there aren't those things anymore mm -hmm. that are necessarily cultural events. By the way, besides... Will Taylor go to the Super Bowl? That's what I'm saying. Taylor the is the only one. Taylor's the only from thing. Singapore. Yes, that's why you're Will so right. Will she make it to the stadium? Yeah. No, that's why you're so right that she can tip the skills because there are so few things. It's like this year or last year, what were the what were the big things? Like Taylor, Barbenheimer. Yeah. Like, what yeah. was a huge... I mean, those are the things. And like, Renaissance and Tour, Christmas. I would say. <laughs> Renaissance <laughs> Tour. I mean, yeah. I, I honestly think as much as I adore Beyonce and that album, I'm like... Was that even too niche to be? Well, this like, is yeah. this is what freaks me out. Yeah. Is when it's like you look at like the Spotify most played yeah. and like Tate McRae has like double the monthly no, listeners yeah. of Beyonce. Literally, I don't know. Who that we, is. No, I, I barely we barely. Is it a country do. singer? Because I don't really it's know. A new, know it's a new, new pop girl. girl. Okay, okay. But apparently, she's gigantic and. But I've never heard of her. It's is very confusing. Yeah. No, no. no. Okay. Kathy, do you know like um, sort of like the young alt pop? Like, do you know who Charlie XCX is? Yes. Okay. So I feel like Tate McRae's maybe the next generation okay, from that. It. Am well, I, I wrong? Nobody throws a phone at her. <laughs> yes. Because now I see that. those young pop girls and people are taking their telephones and <laughs> yeah, throwing them at their insane. head. It's insane. It's happening What's in happening? concerts. <laughs> I think anymore um, ridiculous. Just sit there and enjoy the music and dance a little. Do do people is the phone use out of control at your shows? I ask people not to only because so much in comedy can be taken out of context. Yeah. yeah. And if somebody takes something I did on Tuesday night and puts it on YouTube, then my Wednesday night audience thinks it's old material when it's not. Yeah. Right. right. So for comedy, it's rough. For music, I actually think it's a promotional tour. Mm, I think yeah. if you're an artist, a music artist, and you have a song, you want people sharing it on the phone. For, for comedy, of course, I want people to just listen and be present, you know, and not 
they're not really going to watch the video when they go home. I mean, come on. Yeah. yeah. And plus, you can just hear like that one person laughing too loud three seats down. Yeah. So it's not the best quality. Yeah. I think Taylor Swift should date Joe and Jill Biden. Yep. Oh, in a throuple. <laughs> yeah. I think that's how oh, we should do I it. I think America's Polly ready. Polly Amory's in. Polly yeah. Amory's in. Well, Taylor Swift. I you really, get the Polly's and you get the Swifties. There you go. You know, I think that's Polly Amory has reached a moment where it, literally if there was a presidential debate and there were like list, you know, audience questions, there would be a question about Polly Amory. Yeah. <laughs> Someone would raise their hand and be like, how do you feel about in legalizing polyamory yeah. in the future yeah um, which i can answer how joe biden would answer that yeah i, I do not know <laughs> he would he would quote something from the senate rules didn't he say I'm recently sure. that he, the secret to a long marriage is good sex i hope he did <laughs> i mean i'm addicted to did. like uh, someone asking joe biden about polyamory makes me laugh it's so, so much i, know, I love I the idea yeah. and yet i feel like jill would handle it Oh, sure. You know, yeah. she's a teacher. Oh, she's probably got a boy on the side. Yeah, she had a boy on the side. And then Trump would do the thing of like, he, he would take it to like, we need to ban learning about it in schools. We need to ban people. We, yes, exactly. <laughs> right. People and like, oh, they're teaching banned. polyamory in schools now. Like, yep. we have to ban the there would children's book. would definitely be a hashtag. The children's book where three platypuses are having a uh, three-way. Right. Like, then it's out. Yeah. Burn it. Yeah. Burn yeah. it. Ban it. Burn it. <laughs> oh, God. I Ugh. know. We have, have to save drag brunch. We have yeah. to save I know. Drag we have to, can you believe we're saving drag brunches? No, I thought we were done with that. I know. As a longtime ally, I, you know, I thought we were done. I, that's what I'm. That's what I'm saying to your listeners. Yeah. Get out there and vote because that's it. We can't count on like the normal sort of rules and regulations that would somehow write the ship. We are out there, gays, without a tether. <laughs> it's scary out there. And let me tell you, if Trump gets back in. It's not just Trump. It's going to be all those like crazy Margie Greens and Lauren Boberts and really is nuts. all those yeah. nut jobs. And they are nut jobs. It's okay to say that. No, it's okay. People that yeah. think it's the earth is flat. Yeah. People that think QAnon. By the way, I just learned that there's QAnon gays. You guys. Oh yes, of okay. course. Okay. Wait, how? how? Okay, how? How? Where are how they? How are they? You know, what how I did think? you know this, George? I yeah, just think George, I, don't I start really, with me. <laughs> <laughs> I really think that it goes back to the lack of mainstream culture because I think people have nothing to grasp onto, and so they kind of just believe any flashy thing they see on the so internet. So some gay guys are Tate McRae, some gay guys are QAnon. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. And but I, how can you believe? By the way, I'm on the quote Epstein flight log, which is a list of just Democrats that don't like Trump. Yeah. But the number of people that flood my social media saying, "What was it like on Epstein Island?" Kathy? Oh God. Trump 2020. Whoa. They're not even saying 2024, by the way. But, <laughs> like, how, at what point in QAnon do you not stop and go, okay, not that part? Well, you know or what? Or are I think you just all in? I think there's a general paranoia. I think everyone feels sometimes rightly so that like there are people in charge that don't have their best interests at heart okay that i agree with that. of course yeah. right and but then and so you want easy answers yeah. and obviously like you're not going to go and and learn about like political theory and the ruling yeah. class and all this stuff but if someone is like oh you know it's a cabal of uh kid fuckers right <laughs> and kathy right. griffin is one of them yep. you're gonna be like Oh, yeah, I never liked her anyway. Right. That's <laughs> yeah. absolutely. Yeah. And honestly, I know that I'm on that fake list because of the Trump picture. I yes, know it's not totally, on that radar. Totally. But, the, but, okay, so on the list is Hillary Clinton, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, Hillary. Oh, Hillary, love to say. of course. Tom Hanks, Madonna, Robert De Niro. There's no point where somebody goes, you know, I, I kind of doubt that Tom Hanks went to Epstein Island. Right. Yeah. But it's amazing to me that people... Maybe pandemic made it worse. Also, I, I mean, do think definitely. also people Too are like computer time. Yes, yeah. it really is yeah. computer time. Isolation, isolation. But I just want the gays that are queuing on to know if you keep going down that path. Uh, Kathy's message for a, gays that are in QAnon. Seriously, it's like, let me tell you gays, QAnon is not for you. If yeah. you keep going down that path, you'll find the QAnons want to assassinate you in ways that are beyond. And remember, these are people that think all gay men are groomers. Yeah, right, right. So please be careful of QAnon gays. I know a conspiracy <laughs> theory is fun, but let's just, you know, once you start that path. You know what, Kathy, we need to come up with a new conspiracy theory for gays that right, is, that's that's yeah. Sort of and safe, safe and, and empowering. Healthy. Right. Like I think, you know, when people thought that Avril Lavigne was a clone, that's yeah. a fun conspiracy that's right. theory. That's we can all get behind. Crime. Victimless that's crime. Victimless She's crime. She's still doing fine. She's fine. You probably laughs about it. Well, that's sort of the 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 earlier conversation about who's lip syncing and who's yes. not. Those are all sort that's of great. Yeah, yeah. great yeah. conspiracies. And I wouldn't mind two Avril Lavines. I mean, she doesn't bother of me. Course, oh my very god, very talented girl. Yeah. And are there two Katy Perry's? I'm just curious. So what's going on with Katy Perry? I. 
And now are you a, are you a Katy Perry fan? I do. I like her music. Sam loves Katy Perry. Yeah. Well, okay. Here's the. Th- I miss. I miss the Vegas show. Me too. I wanted oh, to go yeah. see. I heard yeah. it was great. I so the, uh, Katy Perry is sort of on a similar trajectory where she was like so so big that I was a hater and I was like uh, like I liked the songs but right. I was like this girl I can't I can't deal with her personality. Yeah. And then like now people have like turned on her so much that I'm like well come on like like she's an underdog she's an underdog now and now I, I think respect she just her. hasn't released. A really great single in a while. Oh, okay. And I think she's, she's you know, she's counting that American Idol money. Exactly. Well, she really. cares. Yeah. I mean, it's like and what happened. The kids are probably covering her songs. That's what happened with Gwen Stefani. Like right. when you just like get into that zone where you're like, wait, so if I just do American Idol, I make literally twenty thousand times more money than right. if I release an album and tour and have to be on a then tour. Then they bus? get the clothing line. Exactly. Like seriously, yeah. once you're on a show yeah. that big, then the branding companies come to you. But that's why I think it's good that Miley only did the voice for a short amount of time. I agree. And she said that was the reason. She said, I'm a singer first, and the chair is fun. Mm-hmm. And then, of course, now she's got her biggest hits. But, you know, she doesn't tour. I think you should bring her out as your opener yep. on your tour. Agree. <laughs> Agree. And she can do the national anthem, and then you can talk about That's how right. everyone has to vote. That's right. <laughs> that would and be really can, beautiful. That could be our platform. Yeah, that would be really amazing. And we can amazing. do each other's roots. Exactly. <laughs> I love her. I love. I just think she's so legit, and I love that she re- a real, reveres older people. A real and I love that treasure. Dolly is her actual yes. godmother. Yeah, that's really. cool. I mean, come on. That's... Wait, what about Dolly for president of the Gay Island? Well, so this is the or thing dictator with Dolly. of the Gay I, Island. You know, you. I would love if she was dictator. Dictator actually. of the yeah. Gay Island. Yeah, yeah. yeah. dictator. Party. I'm tired of uh, elections. Just pick one. Because Dolly I is know. until she goes, and then yeah. we'll pick a Dolly. Maybe Miley. Miley. Maybe Miley. Miley. Miley would I mean, be a great dictator. There's already a line of succession with Dolly and Miley. Dolly, Miley, and we can't get any one else from the Cyrus family unfortunately because no no there's look <laughs> they can't be in the White House all right wait. <laughs> they can't so be near the mom it. is banging the sister's old boyfriend okay so oh my this god this is gonna date this episode but I don't care I so know, I I'm in I'm, I'm in the story whether it's true or not and I don't care you know it's I, wild I like really have sort of gravitated away from celebrity gossip in the in the recent past and this got me back in yeah I'm like I am this all in on the Cyrus fa- family drama juicy. talk about something I want to hear you talk about on stage and <laughs> even Miley yeah. had to make a statement going I didn't even know Ex- yeah I met him as my mom's boyfriend and now my little sister Noah who's goth Noah's goth goth no I eyebrows I don't know why but that's I'm just my friend curious Sarah choice said, goth <laughs> my friend Sarah said that she looks like the moon emoji <laughs> Well, maybe she just wants to be very different from Miley. Yes, yes, sure, and she sure, is. sure. And nothing's more different than having your mother steal your boyfriend. Which yeah. my mother was so filled with a box of wine, I don't think she would have had the presence of mind to do right. it. And my mom only would want to steal my boyfriend if my boyfriend was like Don Rickles. <laughs> Honestly, then, then my mom would probably go for it. But I love. But unfortunately, just, you're not. I want to know if anybody walked in on anybody. I want to know if Noah walked in on mom. And the, well, did I you hear that they had security? That Tish got security at her wedding because she didn't want some of the kids to be there. And then the other rumor was that Miley was the one who hired the security. All of this is allegedly. Oh, that Miley and that's was good the enough one. for me. <laughs> Works, allegedly is yeah, good enough for me. It. I don't ready. have time for facts. Yeah. No, God, no, no. I'm busy often on this tangent. Okay, wait. What if the QAnon that we are starting is the Cyrus family drama. Like That's everyone, harmless. I think there needs that to be. That is harmless because it to, doesn't end with like a gay bashing society. Yes. of people that want to ban books. No, the the Cyrus conspiracy theory, I think, is one we should go with. Okay, I Let's think it's. It. I think what you're pointing to is there is a lack of celebrity of juicy celebrity gossip. Yes. Yeah, and that is why people are turning to conspiracy. I agree because right. none of it is interesting anymore. Yeah. I don't care about like I don't know. Sometimes I'll click on a page six thing and I'm like yeah. I'm bored. Like yeah. I don't. Everyone's like too I smart see, now. But I'm still into Britney's Instagram. That's yeah. true. Especially yeah. because she's a big deleter. Oh, oh, oh that's right. She like is. she'll do something, like yeah. she got mad at Justin and then deleted it. Mm-hmm. And then she posted another thing that was like, by the way, I, I support his new Justin. Song. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Do you guys ever get the impression she just lives in that big house by herself? Yes. Yes. That's what I'm worried about. <laughs> I think we should move in. I think as someone's like got to get in au pairs. there. Yes. Not conservatorship. Never. No. I'm not saying that. No, au pairs. Just an au pair. <laughs> <laughs> and we could like swaddle, Honestly, maybe. You a being figure. Britney's au pair. That's I'm a show. saying bring back my life on the deal list. You as Britney's au pair. That's right. Uh, I mean, that would be groundbreaking. Yeah. The nanny. The nanny. It's a remake of the nanny. We have thought of like approximately fifteen valid business ideas while you and the whole country. (laughs) And And we've elected the dictator. Yeah, we made the government. So we've got a lot done. There's a lot. There's a lot. 
uh, being done. Yeah. Wow. Um, um, should we do our final segment? I mean, I think it's time. I, Kathy, this has been a true delight. We are yeah. so honored. Just, what a treat. Yes. Can I just brag about where I'm going the rest of my day? Please. please. It's very gay. I can't wait. First of all, I'm I'm a little overdressed for this. I'm in a Dolce & Gabbana ridiculous pink dress because after this, I'm going to see his house for a birthday. Okay. Oh. And this is, we actually have to talk and about And then later on tonight, this. Sharon Stone's birthday party. Oh. No. You heard okay. me. You Kathy. heard me. I'm not backing down. Kathy, I'm not backing I'm gonna, down. I'm going to confront you about something. Go ahead. Please. You know, of course, everyone knows about your viral dinner parties. Oh, the salon. Everyone's, go, the everyone's salons. attending. I look at those photos and I say, where are the gay guys in this <laughs> gay queen's salon? We crop them out. We crop them out. <laughs> no, the gays are allowed. There's many gays there. I've had gay guests of honor. Okay. But you know. Who's I your know dream gay guest of honor? Oh, gosh. Um, Beautiful question. Thank you. I mean, okay, I know, I'm sorry, I keep getting political. I'd probably have Mayor Pete. Mayor Pete, okay. Because he's he's been so successful in crossing over and he can go on Fox and hold his own, mm -hmm. which is a talent our party is not good at, including myself. Like, yeah. if I went on Fox, I would explode. <laughs> um, I'm actually going on MSNBC tonight. I'm going to do oh, a wow. quick hit, which, is, which I like to stay a little newsy. Sure. Of I course. mean, now I want to talk for an hour about your salons, but unfortunately we don't have... Oh, no. well, just a little bit. Yes, Ask just a little anything. bit. I had one, okay, I had one for Monica Lewinsky. That oh. was amazing. See, I tend to have them for someone who's either in town or someone who's been through, like, been through shit. Yeah. So, like, I had one for Mary Trump. Mm. I had Whoa. one for Stormy Daniels. Mm -hmm. Whoa. I had one for E. Jean Carroll. Okay. Oh, E. So, Jean Carroll, yeah. And I'm, by the way, I'm on a daily text chain with those three girls, <sighs> with Stormy, Mary, E. Jean, uh, and myself. Oh, my and God. And let me tell you. As someone who the feds have actually come after, I really hope they don't ever subpoena that text chain. <laughs> I mean, talk we about don't go easy. We do not go easy. We don't even call Trump him. We call him it. Wow. Yeah, we're hardcore. <laughs> we need a Sex in the City reboot with the four of you. As yeah. The Literally. Leads. Yep. I yep. mean, that would be better than just Throwing like that. That would be better than just, Oh, my God. Near Throwing Ardalis. Sia. Throw. Come on. And yeah. I make Sia sing at my salons. Well, and that's she she does does on We've seen the videos. She does on cue, and she's always perfect. And she likes doing it. She's, yeah, she okay. loves it. First of all, she can't stop singing. Right. So, like, I'm going to her house after this. She just yeah. walks around the house singing either her songs or somebody else's. She's writing a, an album right now with and for her godmother. Oh. Shaka Khan. What? Whoa. You heard me. So I went to a party there about a month ago, and Shaka was there, and they were both singing with the choir. Wow. You heard me. What the hell? You heard me. I'm gayer than you. Yeah, I, I mean, mean, literally. You could I ever dream. Is Rosie coming to the salons? Not enough. Is Rosie coming to the salons? Yes, okay. of course. She's mandatory. I mean, to me, she is like, talk about mother. Like, I, I had mother. such a mother. And she, also, Rosie's so legit. Like, I love her TikTok. Yeah. Because it's just her talking in the camera, but she's just so compelling being herself. And she's so smart and funny and interesting. So she's a great salon guest. Okay. And like, I had one for this guy, um, Officer Mike Falo Mike uh, Fanone. He was the guy on January 6th where they pulled him into the crowd, tased him until he had a heart attack. Oh, they God. almost killed him, like, right live. So... I had one for him and I invited Rosie and I said, look, this guy's a former cop. He's not going to be like Mr. Rainbow. Just keep that in mind. Don't expect a typical Kathy Griffin party. So Fanon comes over. I give him a drink. and he, I go, Rosie O'Donnell's coming. I go, no, she's what's called a lesbian. I know you've never met one, but they're real. And she's a genuine lesbian. Goes down on chicks constantly. <laughs> really does. It lives it. So just don't embarrass me and call her like a b bad name or something. And he was so funny. His drink is shaking. He goes, I, I know a lesbian. I go, now, now you know too. <laughs> he and Rosie Rosie got on. They oh were talking God. sports. She can talk straight like nobody. Oh, I'm they sure. They were talking UFC yeah. fights. I Whoa. mean, deep dives. Deep dives into UFC. Wow. And they, those two were like the romantic couple of the salon. Well, Huge. Love you never know. Making love happen. You never know. <laughs> um, Incredible. Let's do our final okay, set. Okay, let's do it. Um, um, <laughs> I'm like, I can feel my bag filling. And <laughs> oh, my God. Sam. <laughs> Time to drain. Time. <laughs> <laughs> so gross. I love it. I, the the fact, realness, baby. Yeah, I love the realness. Gotta. Catheters unite. Yeah. Catheters unite. Um, Kathy, our final segment is called Shout Outs. And in this Kay. segment, we pay homage to the grand straight tradition of the radio shout out. And we shout out anything that we are enjoying. We'll go first. Um, person, place, thing, you're idea. At, you're on Z100. You're shouting out to your squad back home. You're, sh okay. you're saying, I want to give a shout out to water. I want to give a shout out to, you okay. know, whatever. And we'll go first. And we'll go first. Do you, okay. And I have one. I have one too. <laughs> 
What's up, freaks, losers, and perverts? I want to give a huge shout-out to my very chill surgeon. This guy is a dramatic actor. The way he walks into a room, and I feel like I'm not in a real hospital, but a set of a hospital. <laughs> and I think that is so L.A. and so powerful. When he said that his wife is in the industry, I said, of course she is. It's L.A., isn't it? And, you know, the way that he, he has rapport with me, the way that he makes... He's so calm. He's that type of guy where you're like, I need you to like me. You have performed surgery on me and that's not good enough i need you to want to care, hang out with care. me i need you to care so every time he enters i'm on i'm being charming i'm i'm smiling and You're i don't know what it fewer is stitches. i'm trying to get fewer yeah. stitches i'm trying to get better care right and i think it's actually kind of working and wow. he's doing an incredible job that being said he did make me wear a catheter all weekend long and i was uh, complaining about it and it might have knocked me down a few points but sometimes you got to make your needs known Woo-woo. you gotta charm wow. him back honey get uh, back in there back. and start the yeah. Charm machine. Monday. Um, all right, I have one. Um, what's up, chicas back home? I want to give a shout out to the film Young Adult, written by Diablo Cody, starring Ooh. Charlize Theron. Yeah. I was in my haunted East Hollywood Airbnb two nights ago, and I said, I need something to get me in uh, the mood. I need something to remind me what art is, what a performance is, what a woman in charge looks like. And I said, I'm going to watch Young Adult, one of the great film performances of the last 20 years. Charlize Theron should have 15 Oscars. She is one of our best. I think they should remake every movie starring only her in all the roles like Eddie Murphy. I am so happy when she's on screen. Diablo Cody is a generational talent, and they they need to give her... They, she basically needs to be like Greta Gerwig. Like yeah. they need to yeah. give her all the opportunities. All the control, she, yes, yeah. and say you get to be in charge of this movie from beginning yes. to end. She's got the Academy Award, right? She's got the Academy Award. She's got those goods. Talk about someone who's got the goods. Like yeah. when she burst on the scene, you were like, "Oh, she could be a one-hit wonder." Would you know? No, nope. she is a great screenwriter. Yeah. She is so smart. She's so talented. And Young Adult is a real underrated movie. I know everyone likes it, but I'm I actually never re- seen it. Oh, it's so good. Everyone should rewatch it every year. Patton Oswalt is amazing in it. Oh. In like, such a good actor. He's Patton. such a good actor. I've known him for decades. He's yeah. so funny as a comic, but he's a really good actor. Yeah. Have you seen Young Adult? No, but I. You now got, I'm so excited. Have, I don't want to ruin everything. Anything. Patton has like a truly heartbreaking, dramatic. Wow. Turn. Like it is a. I'm so glad it to is hear like that. Oscar worthy. No, wow. I love when comedians yeah. get to surprise yes. you and get yes. a great performance. Yeah. Well, I will text him. All right. This and tell him you said that. Well, that's Woo. my shout out. Woo. Love okay. It. Well, Kathy, whenever you're ready. Okay. I I mentioned her once, but I got to give the shout out to E. Jean Carroll mm. because she is the only person so far that has actually held Trump accountable in a court of law. Now, it's to her cases were civil cases, not criminal. So shout out to Tish James and what she's doing in Alvin Bragg. But the fact that E. Jean actually had Trump or his beneficiaries or benefactors, I should say, give $5 million in escrow. She just won an $83.3 million judgment against him. I want to think there's a time where the state of New York actually seizes his buildings and has to give that money to E. Jean Carroll. So shout out to E. Jean that for would be being thrilling. 80 shout years of age and sitting in a courtroom and having to face him. And then afterwards saying, I was so scared of him all these years, but when he was next to me in that courtroom, I realized he was nothing. Whoa, whoa, nothing chills. juicy yeah love that um, I mean talk about a true a pro like just poised oh, man. smart 80 years yeah. old and I have uh, to be shallow looks great looks great mm-hmm. you looks gotta say great. look great in that uh, New York mag cover yep yeah. Yeah. yep um, all right Wow. Well, thank you so much for doing this podcast. Episode. This Truly was incredible. And it thank was you for a dream my score of a thousand doves. Oh my God. A thousand, 1100. 1100, I believe, is the actual yeah. number. And we'll send you those doves in the mail. Thank you. Yeah, Some yeah, of them yeah. will die on, on the way. That's okay. Yeah, and, we don't package them. And, and be on the lookout for our. Uh, I listen to Straight Lab and I vote t-shirt. Yes, We're sending will, you one. You'll be yeah. on the lookout for it on my chest. That's where it's going to be. We'll see you on the Daily Mail. Yep. Amazing. All right. Well, thank you, Kathy. Thanks, you guys. This Bye. is fun. Bye.